Good morning and welcome to Jesus Saves Ministries on this beautiful, rainy, but blessed Sunday morning. Hey, this weekend, we just want to talk a little bit about what occurred in Morocco. And you might say, well, why are you talking about Morocco? Well, because Bishop Shane's brother, one of his younger brothers who was on his way to Ghana, Africa, had to make a stop overnight in Morocco. And on Friday night, we received a phone call um, from a friend in Georgia late Friday night saying that there was an earthquake in Morocco and that a number of people were killed. Now, we weren't exactly sure where the earthquake was centered and um, exactly what area of Morocco was hit. Um, the airport and where my brother-in-law was staying is in Casablanca. And I know a few years ago, my brother was in Marrakesh in Morocco. But as we began to reach out, we said, well, uh, let's try to call Mike and see where he is. And we kept calling and calling and we got phone calls from Georgia. We was going back and forth for about an hour. And then I said, let me check his itinerary and see um, his flight, check his flight number, what time he was leaving out of Morocco. We knew he was leaving out of Morocco um, Saturday morning, their time, early, early in the morning. And so when I checked the uh, flight, went online, checked the airlines, because it was a foreign airline, checked the airlines, checked his flight number, it said that the plane had departed. And so there was a, a bit of relief, but we were still going back and forth because um, you know we weren't sure and we couldn't touch base with him. So finally, when he landed in Ghana, Africa, he did reach out to us and the friend from Georgia, he called us and he said, you know, he spoke with Mike and that he was okay. And so when we had a chance to talk with Mike, he was telling us how uh, uh, people were screaming, you know, uh, people were running. And when you're in a foreign country, it's like, you know, or even here in America, you see people running, you're like, what, what, what's going on? And he said that um, the, I guess the pilot you know, usually when you're boarding a, a air, airplane, the, you go in, in a certain order. He just told everyone, just get on board. Just everyone get on the plane who is going to Ghana. So he said they just got on the plane quickly. The plane took off and they made it to Ghana safely. But the people who were left behind in Morocco are grieving. Um, over 2000 people were killed. Homes were destroyed, uh, lives are destroyed, so many are gone. And so we just want to take this time just to pray for them. And that's what we did that night. My husband, he said, let's, let's pray for those people. Because, you know, we look at things and we said, you know, if there's a murder or, or something, oh, that's taking place, say, in Iowa, well, that doesn't affect me. Or even this earthquake that's halfway around the world, ah, that's in Morocco, that doesn't affect me. But when it comes close to home or when it touches home, that's when we go into another mode. And so we want to just be mindful that as we pray, we want to pray for ourselves first. We want to pray for family, friends, and friends. But we also want to pray for people that we know and people that we don't know because lives are affected. Change takes place. And as believers, it's our job to hold them up in prayer. So as Bishop Shane comes in, you know, he's going to tell us a little bit more and how it affected him personally, because that was a family member. And so we just want you to listen to what he has to say and what he's going to be teaching on by way of the Holy Spirit. I thank God for my wife, Angela, and uh, I won't spend too much time, you know, talking about what happened and how it happened. I just thank God um, for his mercy and his grace. But I'm saddened. Uh, I mean, I cried when I heard the news and got information that my brother was uh, not responding and uh, received a phone call that he was on that flight. Um, it really troubled my spirit like never before. I heard about plane crashes and I heard about earthquakes and I heard about fires and I heard about that. I heard, I mean, on a constant basis, we hear about those things, but they never really affect 
our hearts uh, until it's close, right in proximity to our spirit, to our heart. And this hit me so hard. Uh, my faith was shaken. Hallelujah. And I had to look to Jesus. He's the author and the finisher of our faith. I had to strengthen myself. And when they say be strong in the Lord and the power of his might, we preach that all the time. We teach it all the time. But when things happen of, of such magnitude, it really uh, changes your life. I had an uncle who uh, went missing. They never found him. You know, I mean, my father's brother years, I mean, years ago. And it, 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 it was it was a challenge, but it just still didn't affect me. I was younger. I didn't comprehend what was happening. But then uh, this particular situation that transpired this uh, weekend, it really touched the core of my being. And uh, I cried out to God concerning my brother. And the Holy Spirit quickened me and began to talk about the individuals who lost their family members. And as the Holy Spirit began to speak to my heart about those individuals, uh, my heart was hardened again, and I cried out for those families to be strengthened. I needed strength. I needed to hear from God. And I, I, I began to pray for those individuals, and I'm still praying for those individuals. And I ask you to pray for those individuals who have lost loved ones. Praise be to God. And we pray that God would move mightily. I, I, I sought peace. Um, as I heard of the tragedy, I sought peace. When tragedy comes, you want peace to come. And it's very difficult to have peace when you hear tragedy, when tragedy knocks at your door. Praise be to God. And I was reading um, out of Acts, and it was talking about Peter, and the word peace kept coming up in my heart. And I just want to read this to you because Prior to this happening, I mean, I had been reading this particular verse, and it began to bring comfort and peace to my heart. The Holy Spirit brought it back to my remembrance, and uh, I was able to stand on God's promises, and God is faithful. And I just want to say to all those who have lost lives that God is a God of peace. All the people that are challenged in that way their families, we want to pray uh, uh, for their families. They lost their loved ones, and we want to pray for their family that uh, God would supernaturally strengthen their hearts and God would bring peace in the storm. Uh, in Acts chapter 12, starting at the first verse, um, it talks about um, something that we all need to hear whatever the conditions are. Um, it tells us different things that transpire and how we can be motivated to press through it. Uh, it says, now about the time Herod the king stretched forth his hand to vex certain of the church, there was major challenges. Uh, the church was facing um, King Herod now began to challenge and vex the church and begin to uh, do some horrific things against the church. Listen to what he says. Uh, and he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. We're talking about King Herod and how he began to turn on the church and, and, and begin to persecute the church. John, uh, James, the brother of John, was killed by the sword by Herod the king. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of the unleavened bread. Verse 4 of chapter 12 of the book of Acts, it says, And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Peter, therefore, was kept in prison, but 
prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. So, the, one of the first things that we have to get into our spirit is, what is our reaction to whatever transpire, or uh, what do we do under these circumstances of hurt, pain, sorrow, persecution? And God has given us his word so that we might be able to stand on his promises. But we have to go to him. We have to pray unto him, the author and the finisher of our faith. Listen to what he says. Peter, therefore, was kept in prison. But what did he do? Let's read it, verse 4. It says, when, when, he had, when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison, delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter to bring him to the people. Peter, hmm, verse 5, therefore was kept in prison, but what happened? Underline this. Write this down. Begin to do this for yourself and others. Prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. Hallelujah. That's one key piece of operating in victory in the storm, or having peace in the storm, or trusting God in the storm is prayer. But we we love, we love to pray when it happens. I, I went into extra prayer mode when I thought that my brother uh, was uh, caught up in this earthquake. I, I went into prayer mode when I found out he had made it out. But then so many other folks uh, have gone on and perished in the earthquake. And I, I, I begin to pray. But we ought to learn how to pray without ceasing when uh, life seems to be okay. When you can pay your bills. When your children are acting right. Hallelujah. When, when, when praise God, you do have a job and you do have your health. Hallelujah. You ought to pray without ceasing. It says, a prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. It, they made it personal. There's some folks that we need to pray for individually. There's some family members who's just been challenged in such a way. They, they, they've been caught out in prison. Some have lost loved ones. And God is telling us to look to him. He's the author and finisher of our faith. It's one thing to worry. It's one thing to be frustrated. It's one thing to be depressed. But that's not God's answer for the circumstances you may be in. He says, Peter therefore was kept in prison. Hallelujah. But prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God. For another thing was, he was connected to a body of believers. And it's important if you're going to operate in victory, you cannot just say, okay, I, I, I'm, I'm just going to do this on my own. No, the Bible says, forsake not the assembling of ourselves together. Also, he talked about how important it is for two or more to gather in his name. He says, I'll be in the midst. It's also important that you understand, praise be to God, that in agreement, when you come in agreement with individuals on what God has already said, you're agreeing on God's word, the spirit of God, the power of God moves mightily. It says that when Herod would have brought him forth, the same night Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, huh? Bound with two chains, and the keepers before the door kept the prison. So now Peter is bound. He's done prayed. He's trusting God. People are praying for him. But look at the condition he finds himself in. He's bound, all right? between two soldiers and kept before the door, prison was guarded, challenges. He could not just walk out, praise be to God. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him. Where? In captivity. The angel of the Lord came to him in captivity. He was bound. But God is not limited to rescue you or to save you or to speak to you in your physical condition, in your mental condition, 
in your spiritual condition, as you begin to look to Jesus and have, this is beautiful right here, how he had people interceding for him. The church went into prayer. Hallelujah. Are you surrounded by people that will pray for you? Are you amongst the prayer warriors that needs to pray for others? We lack in that area concerning our prayers for the body of Christ, our prayers for other believers in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. It says, and behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him and a light shined in the prison and he smote Peter on the side, raised him up saying, rise up quickly and his chain fell off from his hands. And the angel said unto him, Gird thyself and bind on, hallelujah, thy sandals. And so he did. And he said unto him, Cast thy garment about thee and follow me. And he went out, verse 9 says, and followed him. And was not that it was true, which was by the angel, but thought he saw a vision. And when they were past the first and the second ward, they came unto the iron gate that leadeth unto the city, which opened to them and his own accord. And they went out and passed on through one street, and forthwith the angel departed from him. And when Peter was come to himself, he said, Now... I know of a surety that the Lord has sent his angel and has delivered me out of the hand of Herod and from all the expectations of the people of the Jews. First, God res rescues him. Didn't need any technology, didn't need any key. Praise be to God. He sent the angel down. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It says in the verse 8, the angel said unto him, Gird thyself and bind on thy sandals. And so he did. And he said unto him, Cast thy garment upon thee and follow me. And he went out and followed him and was not that it was, verse 9, true, which was by the angel, but thought he saw a vision. Look what he thought he saw. And when they were past the first and second ward, they came unto the iron gate that leadeth unto the city, which opened to them of his own accord. How about that? And they went out and passed on through one street and forth with the angel departed from him. But verse 11 says, and when Peter was come to himself, he said, now I know of a surety that the Lord has sent his angels and had delivered me out of the hand of Herod and from all the expectations of the people of the Jews. God is a deliverer. He's a deliverer. He has delivered us, not just out of the hands of Herod, but he's delivered us out of the power of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of his dear son, Jesus Christ. Do you know who Jesus is? Have you given your life over to Jesus? If you haven't, invite him into your heart. You're struggling with some things and you're bound up and you're chained up in your mind and chained up some of you in physical condition, sickness and in prison. Have you looked to Jesus who is the author and he is the finisher of your faith? Lean not to your own understanding right now and all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. I'm talking to someone who's challenged right now. Hallelujah, you just felt bound in their mind, just challenging every part of their being. Look what verse 12 says, And when he had considered the thing, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, hallelujah, where many were gathered together, and what were they doing? They were praying. He said, where many was gathered together, and they were praying where many was gathered together and they were praying. Prayer is so valuable. Intercessory prayer is so much needed. And when, when, when they found out where Peter was, the challenges he was having, what did they do? They came together in prayer. And then as Peter, he comes, praise be to God, 
Hallelujah. He says in verse 11, when Peter was coming to himself and said, now I know of a surety that the Lord has sent his angels and has delivered me out of the hand of Herod and from all the expectations of the people of the Jews. And when he had considered the thing, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, where many were gathered together. They wasn't just crying and, uh, and oh, woe is me, and how is this going to, how are we going to get him out? No, they went into prayer. That many were gathered together praying. And while they were praying, it says, and as Peter knocked at the door of the gate, the damsel came to hearken, named Rhoda. And when she knew Peter's voice, she opened not the gate for gladness, but ran in and told how Peter stood before the gate. Hallelujah. She was so thrilled and so blessed and so happy. She didn't even have to. She just heard the voice of Peter. And then when she heard the voice, she was so excited, praise be to her excitement, wanted others to hear the good news. It's so much so that she forgot to open the door. She chose not to open the door. Whatever reason she didn't open the door, she went back and she wanted to bring the good news. Hallelujah. To those who were praying and seeking God for Peter. That's how God wants us to operate. He wants us to trust him so much so. And he gives us a word to go back and tell others the good news. Praise be to God. And as we go back and tell her, the other good, the good news, hallelujah, we begin to go forward in the things of God. We begin to see a release in our spirit, in our heart. While they were yet praying, he was knocking at the door. God, hallelujah, knows what you're growing through and going through even while you are challenged today, right at this minute. Praise be to God. And he has not abandoned you. He has not forgotten you. He's giving you the strength to go forward and give you the strength to stand on his promises. But you need to stand on his promises. Another key thing is you've got to get around believers. You've got to know. Listen, these believers begin to pray. The church begin to cry out. Some of you have a problem with the church. Praise be to God. We are the body of Christ. The body. You're not an individual church. We are individually, but we are together. We become the body of Christ. And Jesus is the head. And when the body hurts, all of us hurts. Not just, not just one person. But God has us covered through the blood of Jesus. Praise be to God. And when she knew Peter's voice, she opened not the gate for gladness, but ran in and told how Peter stood before the gate. And they said unto her, Thou art mad. How many times do we not receive what God has given us and promised us. Hallelujah. How many times have we doubted what God has said to us and what God has showed us and how God has guided us over the years, and yet we come back when another challenge comes, we begin to doubt anyway. No, it says they, are, they thought she was mad. Thou art mad. But she constantly affirmed that it was even so. They said, then they said, it is an angel. All right. She was persistent in her efforts to get people to realize that God had performed a mighty miracle and brought Peter forth. But they, hallelujah, didn't eat believe her even so much so that when they thought or began to feel that she might be telling the truth, they begin to say, well, yeah, she saw angels. She didn't really see Peter. No, God's promises and God's word is specific. And God answers prayer, and he can do it any way he want to do it. Hallelujah. So listen to what he says. But Peter continued knocking. Hallelujah. How about that? He's free. I, 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 now, now he's knocking to get in. He got out, but he can't even get in with a prayer meeting. He can't even get in with the people are because, of, watch this, disbelief. Here, someone comes and runs and says, Peter is free, and tell everybody. And they doubted what was happening, and He's still knocking to get in. Listen, it, 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 God is knocking at your heart to get in, but for some reason we don't believe. For some reason we're challenged to the point where we won't let him in. Let him in. 
Let them in freely. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You've been given freely. You should receive freely. You receive freely. You give, you give what you got. This, this, this young lady, uh, she saw with her own eyes that Peter was set free. She ran with the good news. People doubted. Hallelujah. But her persistency Hallelujah, still didn't cause them to believe it was Peter. They said, well, okay, I'll agree, but it's an angel. No, God is specific in his answers to your concerns and your needs. Peter continued knocking, and when they opened the door and saw him, they was astonished. Hallelujah. Uh, but he, beckoning unto them with the hand to hold their peace, declared unto them how the Lord had brought him out of the prison. He began to testify. Hey, listen, this is not just written for you just to read. We have a testimony. What is your testimony? Some of you have been in prison, not the physical prison with the bars, but in your heart, in your mind, you've been in prison to the cares of this life and to the deceitfulness of riches. Do you know what that does? It chokes the word of God and we become unfruitful in the things of God. What's imprisoning you? Be set free today. It says, but he beckoned unto them with the hand, hallelujah, to hold their peace, declared unto them how, what? The Lord had brought him out of prison. Again, what is your testimony when you do get free? What is your testimony when you do, when, when, when the bills are paid? What is your testimony when you fight through all kinds of racism and hatred and confusion and doubt and evil. What is your response? It says, hallelujah, he beckoned unto them with the hand, hallelujah, to hold their peace, declaring unto them how the Lord had brought him out of prison. And he said, go show these things unto James and to the brethren. And he departed and went into another place. Now, as soon as it was day, there was no small stir among the soldiers what was uh, become of Peter. Now, the soldiers are confused. All right? So they want to know, wait, 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 what happened to Peter? Where did Peter go to? How did he get out? Where did he go? Listen, it says, now, as soon as it was day, huh? night has come and gone. Now, day has arrived. But listen what came with day. There was no small stir among the soldiers. What was become of Peter? And when Herod had sought for him and found him not, he examined the keepers and commanded that they should be put to death. Praise be to God. And he went down from Judea to Caesarea and there abode. And Herod was highly displeased with them and Tyre and Sidon. But they came with one accord to him, and having made Blistus the king's chamberlain, their friend desired peace because their country was nourished by the king's country. And until, verse 21 says, and upon a set day, Herod arrayed in royal apparel, sat upon his throne and made adoration unto them. And the people gave a shout, saying, It is the voice of a God and not of man. And immediately the angel of the Lord smote him because, right, that circle, right, because he gave not God the glory. Somebody said, Give God the glory. Come on, give God the glory. Get God gets all the glory. Who do you think you are, Mr. Big Stuff, Miss Big Stuff? God gets the glory. Not your education, not because you all of a sudden obtain some material wealth or you all have connections with the hierarchies of this world, this world, this life, this temple place. He says, because he gave not God the glory, give him the glory, give him the glory now. Give him the glory now. Hallelujah. Because of the peace of God, because of the presence of God, give God the glory because he is. Hallelujah. You haven't seen that uh, new house. Uh, you haven't seen uh, that new job. You haven't seen that new, whatever it is you could uh, 
bring it to your heart and mind to think of or think about or what has been troubling you. You let it go because you give God the glory. Because you can see God in everything that has come your way. You learn how to trust God in all the challenges you face. You, you, you learn how to move forward even in the midst of the storm. And that pleases God. That you walk by faith and not by sight. He says, just to live by faith without faith is impossible to please God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He had not, he had, he gave not God the glory. And he was eaten of worms and gave up the ghost. But the word, verse 24, but the word of God grew. What the devil means for evil, God turned around for good. And the word of God grew and multiplied. Is the word of God growing and multiplying with you? It has to start with you. Hallelujah. We're talking about having it multiplied amongst you and around you. Hallelujah. But what's happening in your heart? What's happening in your spirit? He says, but the word of God grew and multiplied. And Barnabas and Saul returned from Jerusalem. And when they had fulfilled their ministry and took with them John, who was surnamed was Mark. Now there was in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets. Huh? You need to go back and read this because this is, uh, I'm finished, but I want you to read this first right here. It says, and there went in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers as Barnabas and Simeon had that was called Niger, Niger and Lucas and Syria and Massanine, which had been brought up with Herod, the Tetrot, and Saul. Verse 2, and I'm finished. And they ministered to the Lord and fasted. The Holy Spirit said, separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work whereunto I have called them. We're going to stop right there because that's where we want to land at where God has called us to minister the gospel of Jesus Christ. He wants us to stand on his promises. We've read a number of things concerning Peter, but Peter operated in peace while he was in chains, while he was being persecuted, while all the things that uh, would trouble our hearts. Hallelujah. God gave him peace. But God is not a respecter of person. Hallelujah. We are his sons and daughters. And because we are his sons and daughters, we can trust that he is in control. And because we know that he is control, we know we are not in control. And a lot of times when we try to take control, hallelujah, we mess it up. Hallelujah. We're not ready to move forward. But when we look to Jesus, who is the author and finish of our faith, and allow him to lead and guide us through the power of the Holy Spirit, he orders our steps. And all our steps are ordered unto the Lord. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, if you never give your heart over to Jesus, won't you do so today? Say, Dear Heavenly Father, come into my heart. I believe that you died on the cross and rose from the dead. I confess you as my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And right now, I believe that I'm saved. Now, before I close, I want to tell you this. I read this particular chapter, and I could read all day. But you have to go back and read it because the Holy Spirit wants to speak to your heart. I did not exegete it to the point where every Greek and Hebrew word, hallelujah, was spoken of and broken down. But I want to encourage you to go back and read it. In your time, God will open up the scriptures to you. Don't have to be a professor. Don't have to be a lawyer. Don't have to be a scholar. All you have to do is be saved and believe that Jesus is the way. Jesus is the truth. Jesus is the light. And no man cometh unto the Father but by him. God bless you as we close out.